very early on I came across a photo of two Japanese sculptures and uh, I don't know which dynasty they're from, but it's a long time ago. And they were really amazing things, which I th you can now see the echoes in my work far later on. And one was of a priest who kept repeating a mantra and he's, he's pulling out small figures out of his mouth. And the other one is, uh, I think it's an incarnation of another priest, so it's, it's a face within a face. It's, it's very similar to a lot of the work I do now. And I'd forgotten about these two, and, and I suddenly rediscovered them the other day, and I thought, ah, oh, that's, that's where a lot of these ideas, you know, have come from. There's a lot of works I've done which are based around personal memories or incidents which have happened to me, but I don't tend to talk about it too much. Except there's one, I mean, I've never talked about this and I'm going to do it now on camera, which is, you know, I mean, it's not good, but, but it, it was a very traumatic incident that happened. And again, a lot of these things happened when I was about 22, 23. And I went to stay with um, um, a very close friend of mine who was a lot older than me in um, uh, a cottage in Devon. And he'd split up with his girlfriend. And uh, I knew he was in a sort of bad mental state and everything, but on the Sunday morning I went out to get the papers, a long walk, walk to the village, and I came back and he'd, he'd hung himself. And I'm, I've still got this image, again etched in my memory, you know, hanging, I can sort of see it. You know, obviously I've often thought, what if I hadn't gone out to get the papers, etc. But the other thing that, you know, out of something so trauma traumatic, it's odd, and maybe this is because I'm an artist, I don't know, but you take in certain visual, very prominent statements in a way. And I re he, he was a, an old hippie really, although he was one of the originals, and he always uh, he didn't often wear shoes or socks, he was barefoot. And I remember seeing his bare feet, and they were only an inch away from the floor. And I thought, God, life and death, it's, it's only an inch. You know, if he dropped a bit more supported you know, himself on his toes, he might have thought, mm, oh, okay, that's, that's a sign, I won't, you know, I'm not going to do it. But I remember actually seeing this. and. Bare feet crop up in my work quite a bit, and they all relate to that incident. But I, I literally have never talked about it. I don't talk to anyone about it. I like these quite oblique references. I like almost things off camera. You know, getting back to compartments, um, the, the uh, compartments too. One of the chief things I loved about that painting was the, the fact the focus of it the focus of the subject matter was happening outside the picture frame. And I, I love that idea, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and get into some more recent work. Most paintings, you're concentrating on a subject matter, but to actually shift it so that what the real event is, you don't know what it is, but it's happening just outside. I think that's a, that's a very interesting, quite conceptual idea. I do think I work in the margins of the art world. I'm, I'm not central stage, I know that. And I hope that interesting things go on in the margins, otherwise <laughs> there's no place for me. But it's, it means I can jump decades. That's one asset I've got. I'm not tied into a fashion, so I can literally, you know, I can go from one to the next. I can experiment more. Uh, if there was more pressure on me, I think, from, a, say, a bigger gallery, I, I would be producing a Graham Dean, a recognisable Graham Dean. I don't really want to do that. I want to change each time. Not, uh, not in a deliberate way. I just want it to be organic. But I do want to change and s experiment. But I think I, I managed to survive, and that's a key thing. I wish I'd been born um, ten years later. I really do. I, I would love to have been part of the YBA movement. O only in that it would have given me a platform. It would have made life so much easier. 
Um, and don't forget when I started, in English contemporary art was in the dustbin. There were only a handful of artists working in this country in an interesting way. And um, we had nowhere to exhibit, we had nowhere to go. And I, consequently, I, for the first 10 years, I, I almost sold every single one of my works abroad. It's wonderful to have a platform and you can just slot yourself into that. I think it's great. that They should be really happy about that, those guys. It just gives you a context. And art's always about context. I really do believe this. If you take a, if you take a great painting that's in a fantastic white cube type gallery setup, and so you've only got, you know, got a whole bare wall of the one painting on it, and it looks Absolutely superb. But if you take that painting out and stick it into an amateur art competition when you've got 50 around it, all jarring, you probably wouldn't look at it. Mm. You know, it does need that sense of context. It, and also, if you're in a, that sort of situation, a white cube situation, you're reading the fact it's in what, the white cube gallery anyway. So yes. it, it gives us a gravitas. Immediately you walk in, you've got this art oh, in there for a reason. It must be important. It must be good, you know. Um, I've never had quite had that. I don't know if it's just me, but I think I've had a bit of a bad luck story with dealers. and. Um, I had a New York dealer who um, suddenly ran off with Miles Davis, went on tour with him, but she took my work and money with her. Um, I had another dealer in London who uh, committed suicide. Out of blue, just, and then I found his, his brother had done exactly the same thing. So, so, it was something in the genes. Um, was it something in your work? And I hope it's nothing in my way. I, I know I sort of I shouldn't really talk about this because then people think I'm, I'm <laughs> I've got the juju on me or something, you know. Um, but um, uh, how many? I've had another gallery in Rome, and they organised they're organising a show, and uh, they actually in connection with the British Council, and we went over there to talk more about the show, and I found all the posts piled up by the door, and they they'd just done a bunk. Again, with some work. Um, I've had about three dealers take money off me. Um, it's a, it's a, another oh, the, one of my more recent. I had um, a one-man show in London, and it was, it was pretty successful. And I went to get my check, and he suddenly turned around and said, well, I've spent it. <laughs> it's gone. And within six months, he was bankrupt. But I mean, I've just had a very bad luck space of dealers. Right now it's okay.